So you studied your entire PhD on the causes of insulin resistance. Can you tell our viewers what insulin resistance is and what causes it in the first place? Absolutely. So what I think I would like to do, let me share my screen here and uh, show you guys some slides. Now, when it comes to understanding insulin resistance, um, it's very important to understand that insulin resistance is the root cause of all blood glucose variability. So it doesn't matter whether we're referring to people with type 1 or prediabetes or type 2 diabetes or gestational diabetes. Insulin resistance is caused by the storage of excess fat in tissues that are not designed to store fat. So let me walk you through these slides so that you really understand exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, insulin resistance is a dysfunction of your muscle and your liver tissues. It's not primarily a dysfunction of your pancreas, although it can progress to be that way. So under normal circumstances, when you have what's considered normal glucose metabolism or, or uh, you know, non-diabetic healthy glucose metabolism, there's some amount of glucose shown here in blue that's floating in your blood. And this glucose is mainly used by your brain uh, 24 hours a day to uh, think properly and to function properly. But this glucose is also used by tissues all throughout your body. Your heart uses it, your lungs use it, your, your muscle uses it, your liver, your pancreas, your gallbladder, every tissue in your body uses glucose. Now, in order for glucose to get inside of tissues, it has to be escorted by insulin. So insulin is also floating in your blood and insulin is manufactured by your pancreas. So under normal circumstances, insulin directs glucose into your tissues. Uh, one tissue that glucose can get inside of is your liver. Another tissue that your glucose wants to get inside of or can get inside of in large quantities is your muscle. So when this happens, insulin is able to direct both uh, your liver and muscle into storing glucose or using glucose to burn for energy right here and right now. Now, when you eat a low carbohydrate diet, <clears throat> what ends up happening is that the food that you're eating uh, is lower in its carbohydrate value. So there's less blue and there's more what I put here in yellow, okay? So there's more fatty acids that are present in low carbohydrate foods, such as meat, cheese, eggs, avocados, oils, fish, any of these foods that are low carbohydrate are de facto higher in fatty acids and higher in protein. Now, when you eat a diet that's low in glucose or low in carbohydrate and higher in fatty acids, those fatty acids end up getting partitioned into tissues just the same way that glucose did. Now, your, the fatty acids can get into either your liver tissue or your adipose tissue, which is your fat tissue, or your muscle tissue. They can also get into tissues all throughout your body, but those are the three primary targets of fatty acids. Now, if fatty acids ended up going directly into your adipose tissue and only your adipose tissue, then diabetes would not exist. We would not have it as a condition, okay? I should say pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes would not exist. But the problem is that over time, as you continue to eat a low-carbohydrate diet, this accumulated fatty acid buildup ends up depositing fatty acids inside of your liver right here and fatty acids inside of your muscle. So when these two tissues start to over-accumulate fatty acids, then the next time you go try and eat something that is carbohydrate-rich, like a banana or maybe a bowl of quinoa or maybe a potato, insulin's job is to try and knock on the door of the tissue and say, hey, tissue, uh, there's some glucose in your blood. Would you like to take it up? Now, tissues can respond by either saying, sure, and then they open the door and they allow glucose to come inside, or they can respond by saying, uh-uh, I can't take that glucose up, and here's why. Now, in this situation, what insulin does is it says, knock, knock, muscle. Do you want some glucose? Because Cyrus just ate a banana, and there's glucose freely available in your blood. And the muscle tissue responds by saying, sorry, I can't do that right now. Take a look at what I have inside of me. Do you see all this accumulated fatty acids that have built up over time? I cannot, I absolutely cannot take up the, the glucose right now because I'm full of energy. And in order for me to take up that glucose, I have to get rid of this fatty acids first. So glucose then can't get trapped. It can't get inside of your muscle. It can't get inside of your liver. I should say this. It does get inside of your liver and muscle, but in small amounts, not in very large amounts. And so as a result of that, glucose ends up getting trapped in your blood and it starts to accumulate so it gets trapped in your blood there's more glucose you check your blood glucose and you start to see higher numbers 
And then as a result of that, if your pancreas is functioning, your pancreas will then say, hey guys, listen, I can solve this problem. Let me just make more insulin. So your pancreas starts to increase its insulin production, not by 20%, not by 30%, but by 200, 300, 400, sometimes as much as 500%. So we're talking a five-fold increase in insulin production. And so as a result of that, you end up with lots of blue or lots of glucose in your blood giving you high blood glucose or hyperglycemia. You end up with a lot of fatty acids in your blood coming from your diet, which is hyperlipidemia. Uh, you also end up with large amounts of insulin in your blood, which is called hyperinsulinemia. So all three of these have now elevated. And as a result of that, it's very easy to develop insulin resistance inside of your liver, inside of your muscle, and then also end up depositing um, fatty acids and lipids inside of blood vessels. And when this process happens, you end up with you know, a triple whammy. You get an insulin resistant uh, excuse me, these words are switched. This should be insulin-resistant muscle. This should be insulin-resistant liver. And then you can end up developing atherosclerosis, which is hardening of blood vessels due to an excess accumulation of fatty acids inside of your vasculature. Now, when you eat a low-fat diet, what ends up happening instead is that you have more glucose, more of the blue, and very small amounts of yellow, okay? A low-fat diet is not a no-fat diet. It's impossible to have a no-fat diet. So there is a small amount of fatty acids available. Now, insulin can easily communicate with both your muscle and your liver because it says, knock, knock, do you want this glucose? Cyrus just ate a banana. And the tissues respond by saying, sure. Look, I don't have that much lipid inside of me. I don't have that much fatty acids. I'm, I'm open for business. So the glucose goes inside of your liver. It goes inside of your muscle. And then it ends up getting deposited inside of both of those tissues to be burned immediately or to be stored as glycogen for later use. So in this situation, you end up with an insulin sensitive, again, liver, an insulin sensitive muscle, and then an elastic vasculature, which enables you to uh, mitigate your risks for developing vascular damage over the course of time. So the, you know, if you remember nothing from this, all I want you to remember is that the accumulation of fat in your muscle and liver traps glucose in your blood. And this right here is what causes insulin resistance.